If you're into history, you've certainly come across various titles of nobility, such as Sultan, Maharaja, Satrap, or Daimyo, realizing that these vary widely from place to place. But few titles are as famous as those of the English nobility, with barons, earls, marquises, and dukes. But how are they organized, and what is the hierarchy of these nobles? We will see this and much more in today's video. After the Norman Duke William the Conqueror took over England, he created the title of Baron, the lowest stratum of nobility who owned land. The Baron had military, financial, and judicial responsibilities in relation to the lands and people who lived on them. He was responsible for collecting taxes, maintaining peace and order in the land, and providing soldiers for wars called for by the king. He also had the responsibility of administering justice in the lands, presiding over local courts and deciding legal matters. Whereas the title of Earl was usually awarded to a nobleman who conquered a large county or region, responsible for ruling and administering justice in that era. Barons who had land within an Earl's county usually paid vassalage to him. The barons had to pay taxes, pay tribute, appear at court when summoned, and provide military aid to the suzerain Earl. The Earl was to defend the barons under his protection against outside threats, ensure the functioning of the infrastructure that bound the entire shire, such as roads, bridges, and fortifications, settle conflicts between court nobles, and lead the vassals in wars. The intermediary figure between the baron and Earl was the Viscount, whose responsibilities were lesser than the Earl's. They were usually Vice Earls, assisting as advisors to the Earl or replacing him in absence due to travel or illness. A more prestigious title was that of Marquess, just above the Earl. The Marquess's function was usually military, charged with leading the armed forces in battle. The Marquess was often responsible for defending the kingdom's borders against enemy invasions. As a military noble, the Marquess was often tasked with leading an army into battles. He was responsible for training and commanding the armed forces, and ensuring victory in conflicts. As a high-ranking noble, the Marquess was often invited to attend the royal council to advise the king on political and military matters. The duke was the highest level of nobility, being only below the king. This title was often limited to the royal family members. The duke ruled over a territory known as a duchy. The duchy was a large region that could have several counties and other smaller administrative units. The duke could appoint officials and govern the duchy as if it were a small kingdom. The duke had the key role of commanding the duchy's armed forces. In periods of war, he could be charged with leading larger armies, not only from his duchy, but also from other regions of the kingdom. They would often command gigantic armies in the king's name. Among the many dukes who left their name in history fighting on behalf of the king, few have been well known as the Duke of Wellington, who defeated Napoleon at Waterloo. As a prestigious nobleman, the duke was considered one of the king's most trusted and experienced advisors. Noble and dignified behavior was always expected of him, serving as a role model for other nobles below. You're probably wondering if Sir is a title of nobility. It isn't. It is, rather, an honorific title granted by the crown. Whereas the title of nobility is granted by right of birth or marriage, which usually have in themselves legal and political privileges, as well as higher social status, the title of Sir is merely an honor, awarded in recognition of services to the crown or for personal merits, and does not confer any legal or political privilege. Although the titles of nobility have lost much prestige and power over time, they are still an integral part of English history and continue to be quite influential in today's British culture, 